All right, everybody, welcome back to another video. This one is a deep dive into organizational structure and AI implementation. As I was making my recent video about the entrepreneurial operating system in the book Traction and how that relates to AI, it struck me how important the organizational structure is to your AI implementation. And that's what we're gonna dive in uh, into here today. We're gonna learn how to quickly train ChatGPT on the nuances of your business. We're gonna gain a deep clarity into the, how roles will change with the evolution of AI. We're gonna uncover a process to use LLMs to streamline your hierarchy and most importantly, improve accountability. We're gonna look at the seven different organizational structures and find the right one for your organization. We're gonna learn how to strike a balance between centralization and decentralization. And we're gonna look into just powerful ways to continually review and improve your organizational structure, allowing your company to be more dynamic than ever before with the power of AI. So yeah, over time, as your organization grows, it often evolves without strategic planning. I know this is true of my organization and it can turn into this fragmented, um, you know, unclear hierarchy of responsibilities and missed opportunities. So for AI to be integrated effectively, really makes sense to uh, focus on your organizational structure, make sure that that's well coordinated and streamlined. Uh, and as we're doing this, it's gonna be a great way to audit and find different places that AI can be most effective in automating different parts of your organizational structure. So it's sort of twofold benefit here of uh, getting clarity on roles and responsibilities and hierarchies and also looking into which of those can be um, most easily automated and where some efficiencies can be gained. So here are just some of the main parts of the organizational structure. Work specialization, which is clear roles and responsibilities. Chain of command, this is the lines of authority. Uh, departmentalization, specific teams or departments, span of control, number of direct reports per manager, centralization and decentralization, a big question there of um, how decision-making authority will, will run at different levels, and then the formalization, the degree of standardization across all of your uh, departments and, and all of your different uh, teams there. So we're going to use AI to analyze all of this. But first I wanna start off with an intake prompt. I should mention that in my Patreon I have all of these prompts nicely organized into a PDF that you can just copy and paste into uh, ChatGPT. So that's there for you if you'd like that, if that format would be helpful, it's just a few bucks there, helps me keep the channel going. This first prompt though is gonna be the way that we tell uh, ChatGPT specifically about your organization and ha in that way allow it to understand who you are, who, who your team is, what your strategic responsibility, what your strategic goals are, um, and get a lot more out of all the future prompts. So this prompt one is what I call an intake prompt. You're basically asking ChatGPT to uh, give you a bit of a form that you can fill out in order to create a quick summary of your organization that you can then build upon through all the rest of these prompts. So this prompt one, this intake prompt is, I'd like your help analyzing my company's organizational structure. Please ask me a few questions about our organizational hierarchy, roles and responsibilities, organizational design, business strategy, and culture. This information will help us brainstorm how we can make adjustments to improve our efficiency and profitability. Once I've answered these questions, please generate a summary for me to keep on file. So once you have done this and created that summary with ChatGPT, you wanna review it, you wanna edit it, um, maybe manually or work with ChatGPT to refine it and then save it somewhere. I like a tool called Prompt Genius. I've been using that a lot to save these different types of uh, analysis. And you wanna make sure that given the current context window limitations, this should be more than 500 words. You want a pretty good amount of information in there, but less than 2,000 words, any more than that, you're gonna uh, run into trouble with the current context windows. There's a site called wordcounter.net that can help uh, figure out you know, how many words you have in that. Once you have that, you're off to the races with all these other prompts. Uh, this prompt two, how can we optimize work specialization in our organization to improve productivity and maintain employee satisfaction? Prompt number three, 
given our current organizational structure and resources? What is the ideal span of control for our managers to enhance their effectiveness without overwhelming them? Great question there. Prompt number four, what strategies could we employ to strengthen our departmentalization without creating silos or barriers to collaboration within the organization? So these are just some general questions for general improvements on uh, your initial analysis. Now we're going to dive a little bit deeper into the core of this, reviewing the hierarchy of your organization, ensuring accountability, and looking at ways where you can make things very flexible. This is the accountability chart that is uh, outlined in the book Traction by Gino Wickman. I've gotten a ton out of that book. It's going to come up again and again in all of my videos. Uh, this is, um, I think what's different about the accountability chart and most org charts is that there's actually these different roles that each person has between three or four roles, not more than that um, in each box. And that really helps you focus on what is this person 100% accountable for. They might have other people that help them with those things, but they are accountable to make sure that that specific thing is done. Um, and in that book, he outlines this visionary role, which is typically the founder who sets the tone, sets the vision, obviously, and that person uh, has beneath them an integrator. So this is the, a very different personality type, a person that is really focused on getting stuff done, very process oriented, etc. cetera. Uh, and then that person typically has, you know, at least three up to five different departments, uh, uh, answering to the integrator. Those are typically sales and operations and back office finance. So I love just the simplicity and the clarity of this. And I specifically love all of the different roles that each box uh, captures here that each person is fully accountable for. These, these are the different places where we can focus on how AI can help with automation. So really simplifying that down that each each person or each box is responsible and accountable for three to four roles this is going to be a complete map of different different automation processes that we can focus on while we're implementing ai into your organization prompt number five here what changes can i implement to enhance the clarity of our chain of command how might these changes impact the overall organizational efficiency Prompt number six, please outline how we might implement a, an accountability chart as outlined in Gino Wickman's book, Traction. So once you have that organizational structure analysis that we went through in that intake prompt, you can just ask it, hey, walk me through creating this accountability chart uh, that I just showed you there and, and work with ChatGPT to do that. Here are some other organizational structures that might be good to think about. There's the functional structure. This is the most basic one that I, I think uh, is one we just went over. There's the multi-divisional structure, the M form. This is for larger corporations dividing into multiple semi-independent divisions, each responsible for its own profitability. So if you're a large organization, I would say if you're over 500 workers or more, that might start to be something you uh, look at. There's a very flat structure, which has very few or no levels of middle management. This fosters a lot of direct participation, a lot of collaboration, can lead to quick decision making. There's also some downside to that as, you know, maybe one person might have a bunch of people reporting to them. They could, you know, certainly wouldn't be uh, possible to do that across a 500 person organization. There's the circular structure, which is similar to that flat structure where the leader sits at the center and employees form concentric circles around them. This is a very democratic approach to this and allows for different flow of ideas and decisions. There's the team-based structure, which is a little bit like that M-based structure, but for a smaller group here, these are teams that are formed for specific tasks. They all have a high de degree of autonomy and self-management ideal. Ideally, when a project is done, those teams can reform very quickly. Uh, then there's the network structure, which is a modern structure that is less hierarchical, and it uh, basically is used by companies who rely on remote or contract workers. So the core team is small, and then they farm out a lot of things to remote workers and potentially thinking about those remote workers as also being AI systems or different uh, automation uh, companies there that can help with that. So that network structure might be one to really take a good look at. 
Here are some prompts for analyzing this. Number seven, how can our communication and collaboration needs be met more effectively? Would a functional matrix, circular, or network structure be best to facilitate this? Prompt number eight, given the current size and growth trajectory of my organization, would a functional, multi-divisional, or flat structure support or scale our future expan expansion? Prompt number nine, given the expertise and decision-making skills of my staff, would a flat structure with fewer management levels foster innovation and efficiency, or would it cause confusion and lack of direction? So a few things you can work with ChatGPT about there. Now we're getting into just analyzing the folks, the right people in the right seats. This is famous from the book Good to Great. Uh, Gino Wickman in the book Traction uh, uses it a lot, but I think it's important to think about machines being in the right seats as well now as these tools become so much more advanced than they ever have been in the past. So. Prop number 10, can you suggest a method for us to systematically review and update job roles and responsibilities to keep our work specialization in line with evolving business needs? Prop number 11, please outline how we might implement the people analyzer process that is outlined in Gino Wickman's book, Traction. So again, highly recommend you check out that book, uh, but then you can use ChatGPT as your coach once you have that that organizational structure analysis in its memory to help you implement some of these things. Striking the balance between centralization and decentralization. So this is highly related to those uh, different structures, uh, but I think deserves a deeper look as well. So can you provide a comprehensive analysis of centralized versus decentralized decision-making authority uh, and their potential impacts on our organization's performance? Prompt number 13, how can we effectively balance centralization and decentralization in our organizational structure to foster innovation while maintaining control and coordination? You'd be surprised at the things that it can come up with, especially if it understands your business reasonably well. It might recommend different teams having uh, more centralization or decentralization. So now we're getting into implementation. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is probably the hardest part. You know, it's fun often to pontificate and think about, you know, the ideal structure, but rolling it out is can be challenging for sure. So here are some prompts that I think can be really helpful with this. Given our plans to reorganize our organizational structure, what challenges can we anticipate? What are some best practices for communicating this to our team? And ideally, you want to make sure that ChatGPT has in its memory uh, you know, your plans of, of what changes you're planning on making so it can recommend, hey, here's what you might run into. Here are some ways you might want to roll this out, you know, slowly to the leadership team first and then more broadly, whatever that might be. Prompt 15, could you provide examples of organizations that have effectively implemented a high degree of formalization and what we might learn from their experiences? Prompt number 16, how can we improve the formalization process in our organization to ensure that all members understood uh, their roles, responsibilities, and workflows? 15 and 16, you might want to add in some information about your industry so you're getting very specific uh, intel into your industry versus you know, a general uh, information there. Evolution, so this is something most uh, founders are surprised to hear, but you should really be looking at this every 90 days. Getting it up and running, uh, you know, getting it fixed in the first place can be a heavy lift, but then you'll notice quarterly things do start to shift and it's much easier to try to keep, um, you know, keep on that and keep adjusting. Think of it like going to the dentist. You don't want to wait two to three years to go to the dentist. It's very painful, but if you go every couple times a year, it's much easier. So it's much easier to keep in tra keep track of what's going on and document these changes and, and look for uh, you know ways that this can be fine-tuned every quarter. Here's a few other ways that ChatGPT can help. Uh, further guidance on transitioning. I've had a lot of luck just brainstorming on how to communicate and roll out these changes. Uh, case studies, so again, asking it more and more about other folks in your industry that have been successful, what organization, uh, organizational structures do they use, and problem-solving scenarios, so just kind of what-if situations. If we decide to do this, what are the challenges? If we decide to do that, what could we face? That can be very helpful to think through a lot of this stuff and you know engage a lot of your leadership team in some of these uh, situations as well. But most importantly, keep that organizational structure analysis that we kicked off this whole video with. Keep that continually updated 
And, uh, you know, then you can just keep using that with all of these conversations that you have with ChatGPT. That's going to be critical to make sure it understands where you're at as that changes through time. So I appreciate you watching. I hope you got something out of this. Again, all of this is in a PDF form. Just a few bucks, you can grab that. I also have some uh, Google Collab, uh, which are code, um, bits of code that are very easy to use if you've never uh, coded before. There's a whole Google Collab quick start that can help you start to uh, use some of this AI. Uh, in, in some really powerful ways to automate different things in your business. And there's also some one-on-one -on -one coaching opportunities there. If you want to chat with me, I would love that. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment. It is very helpful as I'm trying to get this channel off the ground. And I will see you in the next video.